The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line. Barry, sacked by Lord. Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it in for the touchdown. And now, your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Patrick Walker, and Kyle Yeomans. It's an off-season edition of Talking Cowboys from the SWBC studios at the Star in Frisco, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company, the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. We are full steam ahead as free agency and trade talks mm-hmm. continue in this off-season for the Cowboys, and we've got plenty to talk about. I mean, the last time that we were on the air on Tuesday. We were talking about checklists. Mm -hmm. We were talking about what you could do to set yourself up for success over the next week. Safe to say they have done quite a few things on those checklists. Now, are they done? No. Are the Cowboys done yet? No. There's a long way to go this offseason. And I'm sure by the time we get back on the air next week, some more stuff (laughs) will happen. However, we've got a lot to talk about, both good, both bad, and entertaining all the way through. Alongside Isaiah Stanback, Patrick Nosey Walker, I'm Kyle Yeomans. Gentlemen, how we doing? Fantastic. Fantabuloso. I was on a boat this whole week. You were. Oh, on a boat. You mm. were. You were. I was <laughs> out was of it? out of cell service. I was oh, out. Oh, that's the best kind, right? Oh, there. yeah. That's I was out of the country. Mm. Oh, out of the country. On a boat. Oh. Yeah. Cozumel, my friend. Oh, oh nice. yes. Mm-hmm. You've been having a great off season. Yeah. Did I have too many Miller Lights? Maybe. Maybe. Did I need a couple more Black Rifle coffees Probably. this morning to Absolutely. get back? Absolutely. Probably, yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 Did I... Uh, Did I have an absolute blast? 1,000%. Absolutely. And that's what matters. Oh, my gosh. It was so much fun. I had a blast. 12 12 of us, and we all just went on a cruise. Nice. Throughout the whole weekend. I love cruises. And that's that's been my – it was my bachelor party, by the way, for those listening. The uh, yes, that's sir. been that's been my favorite part about down is on, man. this about this whole well, wedding my, process. My, my question is: In Cozumel, did Denton Kyle show up? Oh, he was there far he before they got there to Cozumel. Free oh, yeah. yeah, they have like a drink limit. Yeah, they have like the fifteen minute drink or the yeah. fifteen drink limit per day on the boat. That was like you blown. just blew right, yeah, past, blew okay. right past that. There we wow. go. Um, just the uh, <laughs> turn up. I need a I need a detox. Is <laughs> what I need. <laughs> the the biggest thing about this whole wedding process, the first off is being able to, to spend it with Lorena and go through it with her, and this has been so yes, much fun. Indeed. The second best part is being able to hang around friends and family. Mm-hmm. And so I'm excited to, to see that continue, but I had a blast. It was so much Good. fun. I'm glad to be back, though, because like I said, I didn't have cell service. <laughs> so <laughs> so I you got came back, back to a few things. That was kind of my point as I yeah. got back, and this is where we have to lead off. So I want you to tell me, Patrick, news mm-hmm. and notes. Mm. Everything that happened over the last seven days, mm-hmm. like I didn't know it, and this just imagine not knowing this and then getting back to it. Fair enough. Well, and let's start news and notes by saying this. I did say there was a big move that was likely going to land by the time we spoke again today. Mm-hmm. Cowboys doubled up on that mm-hmm. and said, you know what, no C, we'll see your big move. And we'll raise you another. Okay, so we're going to do a quick little rundown here, and forgive me if there's anything that I that I miss, but there's been quite a bit of movement over the past week. So we have the Ezekiel Elliott release. Obviously, that's the headline mm-hmm. move for the Cowboys and free agency. They opted to move on from the franchise's uh, third best all-time leading rusher. That's going to obviously clear the way for Tony Pollard to take that throne. Pollard is still recovering from the fractured leg suffered in the NFL NFC divisional round, but The Cowboys have re-signed as of this morning, or he'll be in the re-sign this morning, Rico Dowdle. So he's going to be back for depth to battle Malik Davis behind Tony Pollard. But they also met with two-time Super Bowl champion, former second-round pick Ronald Jones Hmm. on Monday. And they really liked him, and I'm told the expectation is that he signs this morning. So past couple days, heavy on the running backs. Dalton Schultz yesterday 
signed with the Houston Texans on a one-year, $9 million max deal. So kudos to Dalton Schultz. He got uh, a bag down there in Houston, clears the way, obviously, here in Dallas for Jake Ferguson, Ferguson. Peyton Hendershot, and likely a tight end being drafted by the Cowboys. Jake McCoy, long snapper for the Cowboys, former long snapper for the Cowboys, is now with the Detroit Lions. Damn it. Cowboys are Why, why is that the one? Freaking A, Kyle. Why? <laughs> Long snappers are important. Said, right. It's Jake McQuay. I don't give a doggone if it's freaking Teddy Brewster. You need a doggone a long snapper. I agree. Long snappers do matter. We for let go those, of LP. For those that say they don't matter, they, they do until they, they don't. They found McQuay. Yeah, McQuay so was gonna, fine. Hopefully we can find somebody else. Well, nice segue because they're working on one right now. Thank you. Um, potentially <laughs> um, bringing in Trent Sieg. Is, am I pronouncing that right? S-I-E-G? Sieg? Yeah, I Sieg. believe so, yeah. Okay, so there's a very good chance that Trent Sieg takes the place of McQuaid. Now, Matt Overton is still out there. I, I would expect that maybe they give Overton a look closer to training camp if something's not going quite, quite white with Sieg. But they have a formula there for replacing the long snapper. And they're going younger there. Because there Sieg go. is quite a bit younger. Younger and cheaper. Both Matt He's Overton. He's 27. Yeah, then both both Matt Overton and Jake McQuay, I'll so they're it. going younger there. Played with the Ravens and the the Raiders. Sieg did, and he was released a couple uh, couple days ago, March nineteenth. Indeed, so and ladies means. and gentlemen, keep keep up because we're still going. This is rapid fire. Uh, Donovan <laughs> Wilson and both Leighton Vander Esch are returning. Magnificent, yes. magnificent, magnificent. Um, Cooper Rush is back in the building. Yes. On a, on a deal that basically financially puts him in the driver's seat for QB2, but you can expect Will Greer is still going to challenge for that role. Greer did an excellent job in doing that in training camp last year before suffering that injury that set him back. Does that put the Cowboys out of the running for drafting a quarterback late? My answer is no to that. I still expect they're going to get a developmental guy that can challenge for challenge Will Greer and maybe Cooper Rush as well. C.J. Goodwin, this is an understated re-signing, mm. but it is very, very important because the Cowboys lost no Brown to the Houston Texans. They lost Luke Gifford to the Tennessee Titans. Those are two special teams aces. Bones Fossil was bleeding. He was hemorrhaging special teams. So being able to retain C.J. Goodwin is massive. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, he led the team. He's the franchise leader in special teams tackles. Um, It was three years running, and then Luke Gifford dethroned him. But Goodwin is back in the building. Now, let's get to the fun stuff. The really, really, really fun stuff. Oh, no, that was fun. I was about to say, wait, wait, there's more? There, oh, but wait. There's more. We're talking <laughs> so, about the Dallas so Cowboys all, right yeah, now, right? So, we are. So all of that was very fun, especially Donovan mm. and LVE. Those were my top two in-house free agents to retain. They did those Pretty things. pumped about that. Wonderful. Yeah, that Magnificent. Was, Great job. Stephon Gilmore hmm. and Brandon familiar. Cooks oh, wow. are both in the building. In the building, as in like touring? Uh, no, no, those guys are on oh. the roster. Oh. Those guys are, are ready to suit up and do some damage. The Cowboys acquired Stephon Gilmore for a fifth round compensatory pick in 20. One of those freebies. One of those ah. freebies. That's right. They, one of the, they flipped one of the picks they got for losing one of their guys, a Connor Williams, last year, and they flipped it into Stephon freaking mm. Gilmore. But wait. There's, There's more. more. <laughs> the Cowboys were in on trying to trade for Brandon Cooks in October, just ahead of the trade deadline. They were un- unable to do it simply because they didn't want to acquiesce to the third round pick, which is the reported ask of the Texans that some say went as high as a second round pick. And the Texans at that point were not willing to eat any of the salary. Fast forward to March, a little bit more of a desperate situation in Houston. Houston sent Brandon Cooks to the to the Cowboys for a fifth round pick this mm. year, a sixth round flyer pick in 2024, and, and they're eating six million dollars of that 18 million. But there's more. The Cowboys reworked Brandon Cooks' deal yesterday to free up that much more cap space. I think they added another eight million to the cap by reworking his actual deal. They so. are paying him a base salary of six mil. That's it. They got Brandon Cooks. They got Brandon Cooks so on the roster for six mil, six mil so you're against the Cowboys. Patience the cap. is a virtue. Yeah. In this, in this, so much finesse scenario. This scenario, in this scenario specifically, yes. because there are another scenarios, yep, plenty of other scenarios. Talking about those, <laughs> where, where We're patience, talking about those. patience doesn't <laughs> necessarily work out. This is one of those scenarios where that they did that thing exactly as they should have, because there was conversation <laughs> was that if it was, <laughs> if if. They held out, Kyle. They did. They held out. They, oh, yeah. If they, they would have bit that at the end of, it's not the first date. No, no. They waited uh, a while. In that in that trade deadline scenario, probably would have been what a third, a third <laughs> minimum, 
minimum a third, maybe well, more. And taking on the 18. Yeah. So this the, is the much Cowboys better. absolutely finessed this <laughs> deal. And and I, I just can't. I, I don't want to know what you're laughing at. I, I know what he's like, talking about. I know what he's thinking. That's what we're going like, to blow, right? It wasn't at homecoming. It wasn't at Tolo. Mm. They, or, you know, it was, they, they waited until prom. Waited until prom? <laughs> they waited until prom. <laughs> Slid right. Slid right, slid right t- up turn <laughs> third, went right on the home. Went right on the home. Went right on the home. They held out and got what they wanted. You understand what I'm saying? I, I'm right there with you. You're right there with you. Pick up what I'm putting yeah, I'm down. Picking up what you're putting Good down. Good job, front so, office. The Cowboys. This is at, a family show. That's why we keeping it family. <laughs> yeah. Talking about dancers. Hey, Kyle, what are you be, talking about? To be fair, how do you, to be fair, how do you build families? <laughs> Listen, to be fair, how do you build families? Okay. Yeah. You slide in the home. So, um, Cowboys what? have done some fantastic work. Hey. And actually, prior to prior to the expected signing of Ronald Jones, and they're likely going to add um, offensive lineman Chuma Idoga as well, former third-round pick of the yes. Jets in 2020, uh, uh, 2020, I believe, spent 2022 with Atlanta. So some offensive line help that's Thank really going to please Thank Isaiah. You. Um, but it, outside tell me, of – Tell me about that one again. What was that? Chuma Idoga, okay. former third-round pick of the Jets. He okay. spent last year with the Atlanta Falcons. Mm. Uh, he worked out yesterday with – Ronald Jones had physical work up and everything. You think both of them could be signed as early as today? Yes, I do. Wow. Yes, I okay. do. I do believe that. Now, uh, do you think they would do you think that would stop them from drafting in either one of those positions? No, I don't think so not. either. I, neither one of those are like cutthroat done. Absolutely not. Get it through. And I'm glad you I'm glad you present that because that's a question coming up on Twitter this morning. Um my my read on the situation is adding Rico Dowdle immediately Make sure that you have competition for that RB3, mm-hmm. okay? Malik Davis versus Rico Dowdle, which is what it was last year before Rico Dowdle's season ended on that injury. Mm-hmm. So let him fight again with Malik Davis competitively. Adding Ronald Jones, having, remo- having moved on from Ezekiel Elliott, it provides you draft and rehab insurance, Right, so Ronald Jones is here because you never know how the board's going to fall or what your draft hall is going to end up being. If for whatever reason you can't come away with the running back that you want, that can be an impact day one guy. He's RB two. You, you got Ronald Jones, yep. RB two instantly. If for whatever reason you can, maybe first round, world goes crazy, Bijan falls to twenty six. Well, now Ronald Jones is there to compete for RB three, mm-hmm. two time Super Bowl champion who's still only twenty five years old. Wow, that's that's key. Because it feels like people think Ronald Jones is like 27, 28. Somebody asked me earlier, why not Leonard Fournette? Well, Fournette is three years older with much more, much fewer tread, much less tread on his tires. Mm-hmm. And probably more expensive. So Ronald Jones, 25 years old, no matter how you slice it, it doesn't impact what they're looking to do in the draft, but it does ensure against what they might not be able to do in the draft. No, I, I completely agree because there's three scenarios there. He's either RB2, RB2 if Tony Pollard's injury doesn't come back in time, which yep. I don't think is a problem, but you never know. Things happen. Mm -hmm. Then he's RB2 again. And then if not, you draft a guy and he's RB3. So, yeah, you're setting up. And we've seen the Cowboys do this before. They are filling the holes and setting up their roster to where when the draft does come around in late April, they're able to take the best player available in the first round. And then from there on, then they start kind of filling in those needs. And they've done it the last couple years. Tyler Smith, Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb. Mm -hmm. I mean, going all the way back. This is the most aggressive this front office has been. That's what's different. Thank you. That's where uh, you. they've done this every year. Man, this chair is sinking. Bro, you just got the, uh They've done this every Too year. Too many tacos and Cozumel? Probably, <laughs> actually. <laughs> A lot of tacos and other stuff. Yeah. The, uh, but I think it's completely different because now they're going out and getting impact players. Because, I mean, you even put it in a, in a brilliant way. The comp pick we got for Connor Williams, the comp pick the Cowboys got, was what they flipped for Stephon Gilmore. Yeah. So that's a starter for a starter. Yeah. In a fifth-round comp pick, you would love, and we, we saw one in Deron Bland this year, as a fifth-round comp pick coming in and having starter yeah. caliber play. That's not the norm, though. It's but, not the norm. But, Kyle, the thing that you said that you blew right by is Dallas's front office is going out and getting who they want. Aggressive. They're not waiting, right? My frustration— And not overpaying. Yeah, my frustration over the past years has been what? They want the discount double check, right? They mm-hmm. want to sit around. They get the leftovers, right? They see who else falls through the cracks, mm-hmm. who else is still laying around at the crib. And they're like, on the good one, oh, right? yeah, let's go see what's out there. Let's see if these guys still yeah. got some tread. No, no, no. This year— the approach is different. 
This year is like, screw this. We're tired of waiting. We're one out. We know what we want. We know the impact players that we can get. Then we can add them to our roster in a, in a complex with the other guys that we have. And now all of a sudden we now we're now we're cooking with with fire. we're dog on fire right defensively you add Gilmore now you got a three headed monster you got three ball hawks that are starting Possibly at your cornerback position four. don't forget Jordan yeah yeah Jay Lua hopefully hopefully you know so we got but right off the back you yeah. know three three cornerbacks right you got Gilmore you got Trayvon and you got Deron Bland those are all ball hawks those mm-hmm. aren't just good defenders That's those are multi interceptions a yeah. game possible yeah. guys yeah. you yeah. you have your I, I, you have I, all I your safeties Gilmore back if there's going to be a takeaways competition there and he's like yep. Absolutely. You have all your safeties back, right? Then you flip the, to the offensive side. Okay, now you got a three-headed monster at receiver. Gallup's going to have a full offseason to get healthy. Okay, it's not going to be a question mark mm-hmm. on whether or not he's going to be able to come back That's in time. Facts. He's going to have a whole offseason to get his confidence back. So you're going to have a hopefully renewed Michael Gallup. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a C.D. Lamb, and you're going to have a Cooks. And those, that's your three-headed monster at receiver now. Now you're loading up. What did you lose by losing Zeke? Well, you lost you lost a power back and you lost somebody that could protect in pass protection. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? If you close out this deal like that, that's proposed right now, now all of a sudden you have fulfilled that role. So now you're literally what you guys are saying, they're plugging holes, but they're going out and getting it. They're not waiting. I've never seen Dallas this aggressive in the first what week? Yeah, first week. And and real quick, and I'll throw it to you. It, what makes this even more, even more special is outside of acquiring Gilmore and Cooks, who have they signed from outside of the building yet? Jones isn't on the books. He should Nobody. be this, this morning. Yudoga's not on the books. Should be this morning. But put those two to the side for now. They've not brought in anyone from outside the building as far as unrestricted mm-hmm. free agents yet, and they're still killing it in free agents. They are. I'm, That's, I'm, I'm, I'm elated. I'm actually super proud of this front office this offseason. Two things off of that, kind of going back to what you you started with. How many times did we sit on this show and we saw Tampa Bay make a move, the Rams make a move, Philly make a move, Chiefs make a move, and you're like, oh man, I would have done that. I would have made that move. Whether it was a trade or a signing, I would have made that move. I would have done that. Standing on the sidelines. Cowboys could have watched it. Yeah. Why why didn't the Cowboys We did that that fifth. Countless times. Correct. Now other teams are looking at the Cowboys two straight times Mm -hmm. in the Gilmore Who's your CB two right now? Instantly, and then wide, wide receiver two and Brandon Cooks. And the thing about Brandon Cooks, part of it that I like is the expectations for Brandon Cooks right now are not to come in and be Brandon Cooks that was in Houston. You're, you're asking him to come in and be a solid number two, which you didn't have. Michael Gallup was a below average number two mm-hmm. in this past, past season. season, but guess what? He's going to be a solid number three, mm-hmm. if, if, if even a really good number three. But then you've got Brandon Cooks, who's going to be a solid, if even really good number two. And then you've got a dog at CD, CD Lamb. Can you guys expel upon what else they have done that hasn't made the headlines, that's kind of went underneath the carpet in terms of restructuring deals that's allowing them to make some of these moves? Like some, like, Can you talk there's, to that a little bit? There's been a lot of restructures. And I that's, mean, they restructured Dak Prescott, which for those that are asking, that does not preclude a possible extension landing this year. That does buy the Cowboys time because they needed the cap space immediately, especially knowing that they're not going to get the cap relief from the Ezekiel Elliott release until post June 1st anyway. Yep. So pull the trigger on Dak. They pulled the trigger on Zach Martin, pulled the trigger on Tyron Smith. That's the key. He's back as well. Cowboys were able to rework his deal. And it, it will, if you haven't seen the numbers, go check out at Voice of the Star because I, I retweeted the numbers from Todd Archer. Shout out to Todd Archer. Tyron Smith is the consummate team guy. Mm-hmm. Go look at what the Cowboys were able to do with his deal to keep him in place. So Tyron Smith, that's more cap space. Michael Gallup, we talked about Gallup. He restructured. That's more cap space. Cowboys reworked. Brandon Cooks. I mean, they are freeing up millions and millions of dollars. But more importantly, and this is what's exciting to Isaiah and Kyle and myself and a lot of the Cowboys fans, they're not doing this to to sit on the savings, which is what they typically do because they like to roll over things Mm -hmm. from year to year because you can roll over unused salary cap. They're actually doing this in these moves to make moves, and they're showing it every other day now. So not only have they put themselves in a great position as we go into only day two of the second week of free agency, typically you don't hear a, a meaningful move from the Cowboys (laughs) <laughs> until the tertiary stages. Week yeah. three of free agency, yep. week four, that's when they start, you know, doing the the Salvation Army. Yeah, the hype is gone. Right. But these Cowboys are firing out of the gate, but here's what makes it that much more. San Francisco notwithstanding, because they have gotten better. They are scary, okay? 
the Eagles are taking a step back while the Cowboys are taking a step yeah, forward. Eagles the Eagles everybody. just lost uh, I, Gardner Johnson. Right. Yeah, look at this. Here, I've, I, I've got nine names for you that the Eagles have departed Talk from. Talk to them. Big names. C.J. Gardner Johnson. That's huge. the biggest one. Javon Hargrave. That's huge. huge. Miles Sanders, T.J. Edwards, Isaac <laughs> Samalo. Uh, Kazir White, M- mm. Marcus Epps, and then both of their offensive and defensive coordinators. Yeah. That's probably the biggest two, honestly. But You hear that sound? That's parody coming and knocking. It doesn't mean that the Eagles are going to be terrible. No, and they're you not. should probably them take at, them. Oh, they loaded up for one year run. Right? Yeah, but that, they, not just that. Out. They have draft picks. They didn't go to yeah. Rams. They're right? going to they be have picks and they have just backups. Fine. Jordan Davis being one. Shouts out to my dog. But they have some younger guys that will probably step up. And I'll say this again. I believe that parity will arrive instantly for the Eagles, and that's why you have to capitalize on these Super Bowl windows when you can. I'm not saying that they're going to go out and be trash next year. I put them at around 10 wins. That's still going to make them competitive. But there's no way in my eye that you lose those that you've just listed and you come away with another 14-3 and three or even a 13-4. And, and four. isn't, isn't you know, Slay you, on the trade block too? Is it in there? They got top, that work. There's, oh, oh, yeah. You, all right. Okay. So, Cal, Cal didn't have cell service when he was turning up. Yeah. All right. So, Darius Slay was on the trade block and then he was Recently. released, yeah. but not officially mm. released. Mm. So, after the news came out, Reworked he was it. going to be released. Howie Roseman stepped in and said, No, we want to keep you in. Yep. So, they get him on a big money extension. However, that big money extension took money away from what would have been CJ Gardner Johnson. So, Gardner they Johnson had to make ends the decision. up right. So, Gardner Johnson put puts out the tweet, the disrespect is real, and then five minutes later he deletes it, and then two days later he's with another team. So, yeah, the Eagles are taking massive steps back. Will they yeah, be well, competitive next year? Absolutely they will. Will they be a 14-win team next season? Absolutely not. And you can clip this for receipt because I said it. I got two other things that happen. I'll write it down. Yeah, two other things that happen, that. okay? Let's do that. <laughs> Cooper Rush got re-signed. Mm-hmm. Okay, that wasn't really breaking news, but Cooper Rush got resigned, but so that solid. gives them some comfort. Okay, you know what is standing out to me, and I know everybody's gonna be like, "What the heck are you talking about this?" While all these other big names, Isaac Alacon. Mm. What happened there? Big so, Mexico's moving over to the defensive line. Mm-hmm. Now that that news that just came out on yesterday, so I. Thank you, because I said emphasis on the big. That's so a large much, human. We had so much to go through. I probably was going to miss something. Okay. Isaac Alarcon. His IPP exemption, International Pathway Program exemption, expires this year. Cowboys are going to keep him, though, but not as an offensive lineman. They're mm. moving the big boy mm. over to defensive Ooh. tackle. They're, they're looking to drop him in there. Now, does that mean they're out on Jonathan Hankins? No, that does not mean they're out on Jeez, Jonathan no. Hankins. Obviously, you cannot equate the experience that Jonathan Hankins has as being that big body nose tackle with a developmental situation in mm-hmm. Isaac Alicon. Yeah. However, Alicon, this is going to be very interesting because anyone who st- stood next to Isaac, and that includes Tyron Smith, and if you stood next to Tyron, then you know that's a huge human, human being. Tyron Smith literally has to look up. Yeah. To Isaac. Yep. It's, it's a big dude. He, a gives, big individual. he gives up a couple inches in height and he gives up a few pounds, pounds. in weight to Isaac Alicon. Yeah. So when the Cowboys look at Isaac and they say, hey, you know what? We we like what you were doing at off on the offensive line, but you're not you're possibly not coming along fast enough. But we have an idea. Now so I'm interested to see with this idea because when it comes to putting somebody in the hands of Dan Quinn, mm-hmm. Let's let's do it. That's party time. I want to elaborate a little bit more on the defensive line and the offensive line situations because by this point everybody's already heard of the news. We've just run through news and notes on what's happening from a skills position standpoint and even from a defensive secondary standpoint. But I want to know about the front seven and I want to know about the offensive line because in past episodes we've talked about those being crucial have they done enough there and could that be what's next we're going to start with the defensive line when we come back right after this when you build you start with the foundation and home ownership is a foundation of a stable future the bank of america community home ownership commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far with up to ten thousand dollars towards your down payment or three percent of the purchase price whichever is less the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America N.A. Equal housing lender. Credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Little sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little sweet says head on home. 
Dr. Pepper's on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Are you ready to take coffee off your grocery list forever? Black Rifle Coffee Club is here to help. As a coffee club member, you'll get your favorite coffees roasted, packaged, and shipped to your door free of charge on your preferred schedule. Set it, forget it, and never run low on coffee again. Members also get exclusive deals on coffee, products, and discounts from partner brands. Ease your mind and let Black Rifle worry about your coffee supply. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com to join the coffee club today. Back to Talking Cowboys. Register now for 2023 Dallas Cowboys Youth Camps presented by Invisalign Athletes Ages 6 to 16 are invited to learn from the best this summer at AT AT&T Stadium or at Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Football camps are led by former NFL players, and cheer camps are taught by the current Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Save $25 when you sign up for camp by May 12th. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash camps. Back here on Talking Cowboys. We went a little long in the first segment, so So let's blow through the second segment. We had so much to catch up on. So much. So much to catch up on. Defensive line, we mentioned Isaac Alacron. We mentioned some of those other names like a Jonathan Hankins and a Neville Gallimore. Do they need to do more than retain up front, Isaiah? And is that a spot where if the Cowboys were going to go next into free agency or maybe trades? We've seen trades being very much so on the table, and I don't think they're done yet. They still have two other comp picks available. Mm Mm-hmm. Could you see the defensive line being a target spot in that regard? Interior defensive line. Okay. I can. I think that. So you're pretty it, set at linebacker. I'm going to throw front seven in the mix. Okay. Linebacker, you need, you need depth at linebacker. Yeah. Okay. There, there are a few linebackers that are still available in free agencies that I think would be some great additions for okay. Dallas in terms of the positions that are available. We can say the names on the now. Field. Okay. So yeah. Devin White's still free, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Devin White, I would and, love to see. And, and Bobby Wagner. And Bobby. Bobby would have to bump over. Yeah, fair. So, so I'm just saying. Bobby, yeah, so you I'm can saying say like, the names now. Yeah, so, okay. So Bobby, yeah, sorry, yeah, we've been we've been freaking discreet. We had to wait until last yeah, week. We've yeah, been communicating yeah. more. We're playing by the uh, rules, ladies and gentlemen. So I think Bobby would be a great addition, but Bobby would have to play an outside linebacker role. Uh, I don't think he's had to play that in his career. So that obviously because Van Der Esch does not have the 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 ability to bump outside. He doesn't have that skill set. So Van Der Esch would have to be in the middle. You need somebody to play. You need either need Devin White, need a Bobby Wagner. You need somebody else. But it's really going to be dependent on what. Dan Quinn is trying to do with that defense at the second level. You want a cover guy, you want a sideline to sideline guy, or you want a sure tackler, right? Those are kind of the three categories. Um, going down to the defensive line, I think everybody saw how important the role was for big Jonathan Hankins. We, mm-hmm. we understood the impact that he had. We understood how important his role was when he was vacant, right? Teams felt like they had the ability to run the ball a lot more effectively, and they were able to work their offensive alignment up to the second level and get on those linebackers that we're talking about. So I think you need another big dog, i.e. that's why they're about to do this project with Mr. Alicon, mm-hmm. okay? Um, I think he's a large human being, and I think my, my understanding is that he did some of this on he, scout team, yeah, right? Yeah, correct. So this that's, is not brand spanking this new. This isn't brand new. They liked what they saw. Dan yep. Quinn's like, I could work with that. So that's inspiring. That's encouraging. So, obviously, he's a project, so you want to get somebody who's a sure thing. I think at the defensive line position, probably your younger guy. But you need a big boss hoss. You need somebody who's going to go up there and clog things up. So, when Hankins goes out, right, when he cycles out and he's on the sideline catching a breather, you're bringing in another guy who now fills that void so that you're not giving them the ability to gain an edge on you when he's trying to catch his breath or 
you know, knock on wood, he's injured, okay? So that's the injury interior defensive line. Offensively, you know I've been beating against the wall, beating my head against the wall without a helmet, okay? Talking about how we need more offensive line depth. I understand that they restructured Tyron. That's mm-hmm. awesome, okay? So that's going to be your guy most likely at the left tackle position. Most likely him, maybe. Tyler, maybe, right? But either way, we're shuffling guys around yeah. to play roles that they don't typically play, right? Yeah. That's not their thing. I want guys that that's what they do. You want specialists. You want want, somebody to come in who has worked for these specific reasons. Yeah. I don't want a punter playing kicker. Chauncey Goldstein. I I mean, Chauncey Goldstein, Israel Mukwamo. There's all these guys that you pick to to transcend to a different position. Correct. You pick so their traits will move. Go get some guys that do this. That's what they do for a living, right? And do this often. So that's what I'm looking for at the offensive line position. More – more focus on the guard. And I know people are always looking at tackles because they're so important, but reality you, you have you have two left tackles. You have Tyron and you have Tyler. Right? Those are your two left tackles. You go to the right tackle position, you have Terrence Steele who's coming off an injury. You go, you're hoping that he is who he used to be. Mm-hmm. And then you also have Matt. Well, let's go. Right? Well, well, let's go. We got it. It's time to go. Yep. Right? It's, it's time to I'm see what you're one. about. Yeah, okay. Um, now you look to the inside. Obviously, your right guard is solid. You like to have somebody backing him up because you lo- you lost your left guard. Your left guard went down to where? He went to where? He didn't go to Buffalo, did he? Connor McGovern? Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah, Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Connor McGovern got paid and went to Buffalo. So you have a void there. Right, and the only way that you could really plug that hole right now is by moving somebody from a position that is their traditional position. So, to your point, Kyle, I would like for them free agency. Most of the big name free agents are gone, right? Freaking Sean Payton went on a freaking shopping spree day <laughs> one and took linemen, okay, and everybody else went and get linemen because you just can't yeah. find offensive linemen. Yeah. Much yeah. like you can't just find cornerbacks. You can find receivers, you can find running backs, you can find a lot of these skill positions to fit inside your schemes. The offensive line positions, you don't find those guys, right? So if they haven't already got somebody in free agency, which they haven't, okay, they might get some guys just laying around that are for depth. But in terms of starters, you're going to have to draft somebody and you're going to have to draft them high, in my opinion. And you know the draft better than any of us sitting up here. So you have to be able to tell us, is there a guy at 26 that they will go get or are they going to be looking at another skill position? It's two guys. It's two names that you could put there at 26, offensive line-wise, right? That's what we're talking about That's what we're talking about. Osiris Torrance, Florida. We've we've mentioned him before. Bigger guy. He played at three forty six, but he's at three thirty at least as late as the combine. Lean so he's, he's he's starting to lean up a little <laughs> bit, and so he's looking better. The other name is John Michael Schmitz from Minnesota, but he's a center. Mm. So he'd be one of those guys that at least this year would play out of position. Tyler Biotish is a free agent next year. So if you drafted him, he might be your center of the future. John Michael Schmitz right now is a better player than Tyler Biotish in my eyes. He's a better player right now. Now, would he play as the starter? No. They're not going to move Tyler Biotish out of the way to put a rookie right. up front. Especially off of if a Pro anything, Bowl year. Especially off of a Pro Bowl year. If anything, they would put him as a backup guard. So they would play him where, Isaiah? If the guard. Out of position. Yep, out so of position. he would be out of position. Correct. It would be an odd fit to draft a, an offensive lineman at 26 <sighs> right now. It might be the best pick. <laughs> Center and guard are more interchangeable than tackle and guard. Agreed. I'm okay. One way. One way. It's easier to go from center to guard. Yes. It's not as easy to go from guard to center. No. But you're right. Compared to going yes. out to tackle, it's different. Yes. It's completely different. So I wouldn't be opposed to that, even though I'm sitting here saying I don't like guys playing out of their position. If you have a dog, especially with Tyler Biotis. Listen, I like Tyler Biotis. I, I, I want to go on record by saying I like Tyler Biotis. I don't think that Tyler Biotis is is has enough size and strength to handle the teams that we play against six times a year. I don't. That's my opinion. I yeah. think he does a great job against everybody else. But when it comes to those big boys up front, unfortunately, you have three NFC East teams that you face twice a year, and those guys kind of have defensive they lines, right? They got some hogs. So my thing is saying, hey, there's nothing against you, but we need some dogs at least put on each side of you to help you because you can't handle these guys one-on-one. That's no disrespect. That's just acknowledging where you're strong mm-hmm. and where you're weak. So you need to put a beast – on your left side, because you already got a beast on your right side, because that's what you do, combo blocks. Mm-hmm. I need you combo blocking with somebody who's a lot bigger and stronger than you. Yeah. And that's John Michael Schmitz. Now, <clears throat> with with all of that being said, it's funny, because on my way in this morning, I got a call from the great Nate Newton. Oh. He just Nate. wanted he just wanted to talk shop about like these it. offensive line. We had this exact conversation. Rank your five starting offensive linemen right now. So it would be 
Tyron Smith at left, Oof. Tyler Smith at left guard, Tyler Biotish in the interior, yep. Zach Martin at right guard, Terrence Steele at right tackle. Correct. Where would Tyler Biotish be in your five? The bottom. He would be number five. Yeah. So even if you went and drafted John Michael Schmitz, it's not out of the question that he may be your fourth best offensive lineman. John okay. Michael Schmitz might be your fourth best offensive okay. lineman. The other part of this equation, though, is do you expect – those starting five to go all 17 games. Well, here in, in mm. no, but I, if I'll, you do, you're in fantasy land. I'll do you one worse. You cannot expect those five. I'll do you one worse to go all season. Are we even certain as we sit here and have this conversation? I mean, the expectation is that it will be the case, but are we 100 percent certain that Terrence Steele is nope. is here in 2023? Let alone beyond 2023. Great point. For, for clarity, ladies and gentlemen, Terrence Steele is a restricted free agent. The Cowboys placed a second round tender on him. That means they have the right to re- or match any That's offer sheet he receives. If they don't match it and lose him to someone else, they get a second round pick as compensation. So that's one angle of it. Another angle of it is Tyler Smith. Not Tyler Smith. I'm sorry. Terrence Steele is recovering from a torn ACL. So that is kind of hampering. Uh, negotiations on a multi-year deal. Mm -hmm. So maybe that multi-year deal doesn't land until the summer. Maybe it doesn't land at all. I say all of that to say this. We have question marks at left guard because Connor McGovern is now protecting Josh Allen. And you don't know what the future lies at right tackle. So those are two key positions that you don't know what's going on there. This is why I don't have a problem with them circling back in the first round of, a, of another year and getting an offensive lineman. I don't have an issue with that whatsoever. But kind of flipping back to the defense real quick, because I, I do want to answer this question. Defensive line, that front four, I don't think that – if you can get Hankins back in the building, mm-hmm. I think you're set. Okay, mm. because you talk about Chauncey Golston, Neville Gallimore, Oso Digizua had a breakout season. Sam Williams on that edge with Dorrance Armstrong. Tank is still Tank. I mean, the list goes on. They got waves of pass rushers. You keep Hankins in that middle. We'll see what happens with Alicorn. I'm Your saying starting I, line. Quentin Bohana. I think they. I start. would love one more guy. Thank, so you're okay Fair. having one Hank ish. Type player. Here's, bring bring, me, on. Here, bring here's, me a Mozzie Smith but from here's Michigan. Where I'm going with. Big interior. Okay. No, we're, but we're, are we talking draft tackle. or free agency? Both. Okay, if we're talking both, Either draft way. is different. Either I'm, way. In free agency, if you retain Hankins, okay. I'm totally fine. That I get it. That's I get what that. I'm saying. Okay. I'm not saying don't draft a guy if you keep Hankins. I thought we were speaking specifically to free agency. Oh, no, we're talking all okay, of it now. Okay, so wide open. If it's defensive line and you keep Hankins, I'm, I'm set there as far as not necessarily bringing in a guy from the outside in free agency, but still attack it in the draft. Okay? Cool with it. Linebacker core, that I can't be – more clear in how shaky that is. Mm -hmm. So for those that are, you know, replying to my tweets about the linebackers and, well, no, see, why are you still in on Bobby Wagner with LVE still in the building? Why are you in on Miles Jack as a constellation? Because they're still in on Bobby Wagner with LVE in the building. And you know why they're still in? Because outside of LVE, which, again, was my second most important in-house retention, second only to Donovan Wilson, you kept LVE. Magnificent, wonderful, not being sarcastic. Thank you for that. That probably just scared everybody. But outside of LVE and Damone Clark, name an impact linebacker for the Cowboys. You lost a depth guy in Luke Gifford. Jabril Cox, I love Jabril Cox. We already know. Very high on his ceiling. However, even he will admit he has a lot to prove to become an impact player. No doubt. And from there, you got three practice squad guys. Devin Harper, Malik Jefferson, Devontae Bond. Okay, that means as you look at this Cowboys linebacker depth chart, as we have this conversation, you only have two impact guys proven, proven, either proven or proven to have a high ceiling like in Damone Clark. After that, the talent and potential drop off is significant. It is. That's why they're still in on Bobby Wagner and fans should still be in on Bobby Wagner. And as a not so bad consolation prize, if you bring me a Miles Jack and put him in this rotation, that's another option. Uh, White. That's another option. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I looked up his contract. Did he get released? Bobby Did he White? Get, no, 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 no. Devin White. Devin White's not an unrestricted free agent. He's, he's, he's under contract this year. I thought he was gone. No, he's under contract well, going retract, into 2023. I retract my check. statement about him. Yeah, well, you retract it. Check. Let's double check. I mean, I, I've got it right here. It says 2023 Okay, so, so Okay, so the guy that is As in much Tampa, as I would love that, but he's yeah. probably going to re-sign no. for like $100 million. So. Right. I, I thought he was a free agent. But yeah, that's what you're saying. I thought he was free. No. $11.7 million. As soon as you said that, like a little ding, ding, ding in my head popped up, and I was like, I don't. 
I, I don't think it it's free. this year. They picked That's up okay. his option. So we 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 clean that up. Yeah. We clean that up. Okay, yeah, so Devin White's off the table. Not even, no not even he's a not, he's not an option. But Miles Jack is still an option. Bobby Wagner is still the primary option. My point is at linebacker, other than LVE and Damone, you have to bring in another guy. And I would say bring even if you get Jack, even if you get Wagner in the draft, you still want to have a guy ready. But you have to figure out what type. And again, that's going to fall upon Dan Quinn to figure out what type of player do you want yeah. on the on the weak side. I mean, that's what you have to figure out because yep. do you want a, a larger human being like you went out and got with Barr? Do you want a sure tackler? Do you want a fast guy? Do you want somebody who can cover? You're using three safeties. Do you need a cover linebacker? Who? What do you think they need? I think they need a sideline to sideline guy. Mm. I think they need. Speed? I think they need a little four four guy. I will say. You know who covers well sideline to sideline? Who? That Bobby Wagner. You know who else covers sideline to sideline really fast, well? But he gonna hit you really well off of his college tape. Really well off his college tape. Devin Harper. Yeah. No. No. He, he, no. he was a fifth he, round draft pick. He had a good camp, camp last year. I liked. Him. He did. I liked him last I year. I think he's. If you don't go get that guy, you have a competitive guy. You have him in there. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I like him. For people that did not see his camp in preseason last year, he had one heck of a camp. Okay, yeah, he, did. he didn't have a big name because there's a lot of stuff going on with the O line and Dak and all that jazz. But mm -hmm. he had a great camp last year. With in terms of availability and actual op realistic opportunities, what is the cap situation looking like now? In order to go sign a free agent, in terms of what you have to take on to go into camp. Right, those are all things that now this this organization has to try to figure out. What money do we actually have to play with? They've restructured didn't seem okay. like half the dog on team already. So this is per overthecap.com. Okay. Uh, as we have this conversation, the Cowboys have roughly sixteen point two million dollars in available cap space. And you need how much to go into camp to I mean, to, to cover the Four draft? year draft? Yeah. A couple million? Usually it's no, it's no. like twenty twenty two. I think. Oh, you mean just total? Yeah, like yeah, to okay. cover the whole draft class. Okay, I think it's like yeah, twenty yeah. something. I, or no, 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 no. Like I'm, 11, I'm wrong, right? No, no, I'm wrong. You're way it's high. twelve. It's twelve. Yeah, I was going to say thinking you're, one, you're two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So like now, so as you're looking towards the draft as it stands right now, you really have about four million dollars to play with, right now. Give as, or take. As, as you, it seems. as you, yeah, yeah. Give as it take. seems right now, without having, I don't know who else you can really restructure. But uh, they still uh, have a, a few. You know, so but so I'm saying like you got four million dollars to really play with in terms of going out to be able to go acquire. Free agents, big name free agents that you guys are mentioning. Yeah. So there's not a lot. There's not a whole lot of big impact players that you're going to get not, but at the positions we're talking about, at least. Keep keep in mind, and I, I guess I, I get the luxury of, of saying this now, the Cowboys have shown an ability to finesse the cap this offseason no, no, in, right. in a way that's reminiscent of what the Saints do annually. I have always Sean wanted Payton them Saints. to be. I've well, it's yeah. it's the Dennis Allen Saints now, but they, it's the Sean uh, Payton blueprint, yes. right? I have always wanted the Cowboys to get to a point where they understood that the cap is not a pie, as much as it is just this mythical number that the league would like you to stay under. But there's so many ways you can pull rabbits out the hat. They're showing me in 2023 that they know how to execute pulling those rabbits out of the head. Look at the Cooks deal, for example. So I use that as an example to say I could see them striking a deal with a Bobby Wagner or a Miles Jack or whomever else they need to bring in that might be a mid to big ticket guy. And then before that deal is even on the books, here comes another restructure. The, if, if they were able to if if they are able to close on Bobby, I don't think people understand the magnitude of that. I've been they how better. long have I been talking about Bobby? They oh, better. I mean your entire yeah, life. Yeah, my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're a Seattle Bobby, guy. I mean, so. I know yeah, Bobby, and he's a I man. He's awesome. Since, I mean, yeah, but the thing is, he's such a cerebral player. It's since, ridiculous. Yeah, couple high. couple things before we take it to our second break, because we're running long again. Yeah, we are. Um, first one, the according to to Spotrack, the projected draft class cap space needed mm -hmm. seven point seven. Oh, so not that bad. Not so that you bad got you got a little bit extra. Okay, so you got about, you got about so you nine, have about, nine, yeah, about nine, nine million. About nine million you can work with. Seven you, point. You can work with that's that. projected. That can change, of course, depending on what deals work out. But based out upon that, you got going. you have two impact players that you can get. Listen, seven point seven. Nine million, give or take, available. You, you can, can do get some Bobby Wagner. You can get two like guys. A two year deal yeah. to drop the the cap hit for the yeah. first year. Add in another guy, like you're saying. Magic can be made. Correct. The second one, though, is even the best magicians run out of hat or rabbits mm. to pull out of that hat sometimes. So you can't restructure everybody. That's fair. But, but nine gives you enough to not have I, to. That's where yeah. I'm at, too. So, All right. Take our second break. When we come back, which one of the new additions for the Cowboys could make the biggest impact? Or do you think will make the biggest impact in mm. year one? We'll answer that when mm. we come back right after this. 
Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah's savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Black Rifle Coffee Company serves premium coffee to people who love America. When you drink Black Rifle Coffee, you are directly supporting veterans, law enforcement, and first responders in your community. Black Rifle's expert roasters love coffee almost as much as Texas loves football, so it makes sense that America's Coffee partnered with America's team. Go online at BlackRifleCoffee.com and fuel up with the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com to fuel up today. Lil Sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Lil Sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper's on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Back to talking Cowboys. All right, Isaiah, I need you to give me your best yeehaw at the best part in this whole <laughs> thing, all right? Give me the Here we go. This is how we country. Country Music's Party of the Year is coming to the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco on May 11th. The Academy of Country Music Awards are presented, or always bringing you country music's brightest stars together under one roof. And no one does country quite like Texas. Witness history in less than two months. Limited tickets remain. Get yours at SeekDeek.com. Yeah! Oh, there he goes. Solid. How Very was the nice. rodeo? You went to the rodeo. Oh, the rodeo was How fire. Was That's why I asked hey, for the hey, big ups to whoever uh, upgraded my seats because those were not the seats that I purchased. I purchased some seats uh, not on the first level, and uh, because it's a family of five, Kyle, it gets mm-hmm. very expensive. Yeah, I know. And I, was, I got you, yeah. man. And so, electricity bills. So, so we get there, and I bring up my tickets, and it says VIP been upgraded. Mm. And my, we had tickets like right down there by like where home plate would have been at. Noise. Not complaining at all. Wow. Got down there, and somebody was sitting in our seats. And I said, excuse me, <laughs> <Pardon."> VIP. <laughs> We're VIP. I don't know if you know that or not. <laughs> Pardon? You got to do it with the head shake. Yeah, I had the head shake. I don't know if you Pardon know this me. or not. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's fun. And I explained to my kids why people sit in seats that aren't mm-hmm. theirs. That was a whole conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm that person. Like, I'm riding a bull tonight. Yeah, exactly. No, it was awesome. I love the rodeo. I'm, I'm happy that it's rodeo season. They had me ride a, a mechanical bull on bourbon. No way. Mm-hmm. Oh, how Is there good. video footage? No. We, we know how it ends. Actually, there is, we but know I'm how telling you no. Oh, yes. I can find it. No. Oh. I just want to know how long you were up there. We know how it ended, but how long were you up there? I'm good. Beamer? Good. Yeah. Hey, we, can I get a- Full eight get, seconds, my friend. Can I get a clean yeehaw from you? From <laughs> You again, please. You need one right now. Yeah, right, I need right, one right now. Clean. Yeehaw! Now that we'll go with. Now we got to go like three yeah. seconds. Ready? Ready? Yeehaw! That's the cut. Is that All the right, cut? I'm yeah. gonna use that. There you go. I like it. I'm gonna go back and get that. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Beamer. It's gonna be one of the new drops. <laughs> There's Chris Beam doing fantastic work as always. All right. The question everybody wants to know: Which one of the new additions? And I'll I'll throw free agents in there as well. I guess. They're all trades, right? I mean, we yeah, have it. Until two trades. Until until now. But which one of the two? Stephon Gilmore, Brandon Cooks. Who has the bigger impact? Gilmore. In year one? Gilmore. Why is that? Uh, because you all you have no good place to go with the ball. Mm. Do you know what Stephon told me? What's that? You got to throw the ball somewhere. Somewhere. You got to go somewhere. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's a problem. And, and the wisdom that he brings. Yeah. The wisdom that he brings. He's now the leader in that room. Yeah. You're not asking Curse to be the leader in that room. You're not asking any of those guys to be the leader anymore. Gilmore has the most wisdom in that room now. Yeah. Not to say that other guys can't play leader no, and they can't. No, 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 no. Yes. Everybody's going to look to him now 
for leadership. So you have two young bulls in Trayvon and Deron Bland that are hungry, they're growing, they're developing, they have a great a, a defensive back coach, right? But now you have a freaking chief on the field that can go out there and direct these guys when they need it. It's awesome. That's I mean, awesome. And based off of the Twitter reaction, Trayvon Diggs is pretty pumped to have Stephon Gilmore in the fold. Oh, yeah. Well, they were fighting over his freaking jersey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, now, and, and now they get to be teammates. What's even more fun is Gilmore is just as pumped to play alongside Trevon Diggs because Gilmore said he <laughs> – because he wasn't able to get Diggs' jersey in that funny little jersey swap battle with Michael Parsons that he's going to make sure he gets uh, one of J- Diggs' jerseys now that he's here. So it tells you that the love goes both ways. So I think the chemistry is going to be instant. Um, but I'm willing to go with Gilmore as well for all the reasons that Isaiah said along with that shiny thing that's on his finger. Mm-hmm. Super Bowl ring, right? He knows not only how to get – there because Cooks knows how to get there, but Stefan Gilmore knows how to get over that hump and get that Lombardi trophy. And for those that don't really know, Cooks and Stefan Gilmore played together, right? So here they are kind of reuniting <coughs> here in Dallas. Yeah. Forgot about that. It's a, yeah. it's a cold combination when you know that you can your pass rush can get to the quarterback. And if your pass rush gets to the quarterback, most of the time that's going to be a highly inaccurate throw. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be the best ball they could throw. And now when the ball's in the air, most likely is going to be going to somebody who can intercept it. That's a problem. But here's, here's where it just gets so fantastic. It, and this is, again, why Gilmore is uh, – and both are just massive additions. But gun to my head, I'm taking Gilmore as far as the bigger impact guy from minute one. And that's because, like Gilmore himself said, you have to throw the ball somewhere. So that basically intimates you can't – what are you going to do? You're going to aim at Diggs? That's a problem. <laughs> You're going to aim at Bland? That's a problem. You're aiming at Stephon? That's a problem. Oh, well, maybe you go deep. Okay, well, there's Malik and Donovan and J. Ron Curse mm. back there. Now, keep in mind, you're trying to do all of this as a quarterback while you have Michael Parsons, Doris Armstrong, Demarcus Lawrence, Sam Williams, Chauncey Golston, the list goes on and on coming at you. It's just the only, the glaring, I should say, the most glaring opportunity for improvement for the Cowboys is the void they just filled. Because once Anthony Brown went down at CB2, the talent drop off there was enormous and the Cowboys basically held a tryout for the rest of the season at that position but teams knew and opposing quarterbacks knew all we had to do is attack the young guy draw a circle around the young guy Kelvin Joseph was the first one to get the circle mm. Nashawn Wright who acquitted himself fairly well but he was the next guy and yep. then Israel McQuamo who also played well in the playoff game against Tampa we didn't even but talk again about it you can't do no. that now. Now when they line up, it's not, okay, where's CB2? Let me draw us. Oh, that's that's Stephon Gilmore uh, in, in Diggs. Well, let's attack this. Oh, that's Deron. Bland, so Bland. so <laughs> does this fully solidify? It has to, right? That Deron Bland is your starting Absolutely. slot? Him and Jordan Lewis? I, I, I don't know that it solidifies it completely. Because you have J. Lou. Because you have J. Lou. Yeah, and Debo window. And, and while this is a great <laughs> problem to have, but it's a problem nonetheless, you don't know just yet who's going to win out in camp between J. Lou and Deron Bland. And both are – both deserve the honor, mm-hmm. right? Deron Bland deserves the honor because of his breakout season as a rookie and as a rookie fifth-round player. Comp pick, no less, okay? Mm-hmm. Led the team in interceptions last season. But J. Lou has been one of the resident ball hawks, and there was a time when he was the only ball hawk on this defense. Yeah. And outside of coming back from a season-ending injury, the list frank, uh, fracture, and for those who need an update, he's out of the boot, he's off the scooter, uh, he's all smiles. He tells me he's on track to not hit pup, but we'll see if the Cowboys are cautious and put him on pup anyway. So good news there. But the slot... Um, battle is the only real question in the secondary for me because I don't think that it's guaranteed that Bland would be the slot over Lou or Lou would be the slot over Bland. That's a training camp decision to come. Yep, and we will have plenty of time to talk about that moving forward as well. But that's going to do it for us here on Talking Cowboys. We're going to have nothing new to talk about next week, so you might as well just wait on till next week. The lies. We'll just go. We'll go back at it again. We'll hit all this again next week because nothing's going to happen between now yeah. and then. Yeah, yeah, at all. All right. For Chris Beam, Isaiah Stanback, Patrick No C Walker, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long. We'll see you for another impacted episode next week on Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!